Good morning, House of Worship. Good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good morning, Spirit Food Good morning. Good morning, kids. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it was a joy to teach on Sunday school this morning. Very smart children there. Um, you are blessed, Miss Betty. Blessed. And uh, I want to welcome Spirit Food for Thought. We are House of Worship in Linville, Kentucky. We are glad to have you with us this morning. Um, we are going to just go ahead, unless you have a praise report, or I know we got our little faith with us today. Uh, when I sit down and have to rest, and they get their machines or something, and it'd be real quiet. So right. Well, you know, that is uh, something that is unusual in this day and time, because the respect for our elders or even the parents today and a lot of children are not there anymore. And Alex drove his first nail. We went out to the shop and he drove nail and he used a handsaw oh. and saw the piece of wood. Yes. Well, and praise the Lord. Used a vacuum cleaner. That is awesome. That and is uh, awesome. Maggie is doing sewing. She made a couple of pillows. You did? And That's awesome. I just feel blessed. You are blessed. So you are blessed, and you children are blessed to have Mama. But we Amen. need to pray for my Katie. Uh, for tomorrow, she's having a test, a um, little problem. Miss Katie? Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, she's having a test tomorrow. Okay. All right. She's a sweetie, too. They're all sweeties. They're all sweeties. But, um,. Yes, we should uh, be proud of our kiddos and teach them in the way that they should go, worshiping the Lord, because time's running out, folks, so we want to make sure that our kiddos know Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, we'll just go right on into song. We have a lot out today. Uh, there's a few that are sick. There are some that are on vacation, and so we just pray for all of them and their travels, and we pray for them to get well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, Pastor, we'll just go on into song. If y'all want to stand and sing with us, we're going to do Alpha and Omega. This is going to get our minds off of the events of the week. And we are going to just get focused upon the Lord because He is why we're here. Amen. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We are so thankful you are here with us today, Father, and that you live in our hearts, Father. Thank you, Lord. Get out there, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We love you.
second song, The Worthy, and because that, and we'll just do that one. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Worthy of it all. He is so worthy of it all. Thank you, Father. We praise you this morning. Thank you.
The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who hath said with our tongue will, will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Now, what I want you to see is in the very first five verses, it tells us exactly. In verse 1, it says the, uh, the, the fail, uh, the, the, the faithful fail. Who are the faithful? The church, the Christian, the godly people. We are the faithful. And it says when we fail, that word pasas means to disappear, vanish, disperse. When we start to Fail, fail by not giving the Word of God. When we start to fail by not telling everybody who God is and what God is doing for us, when we start to fail to be what God has called us to do, then the Christian world starts to disappear. It starts to vanish. It starts to disperse. It starts to go away. And, and oh my, what we see that today in today's world, uh, the, the church has started to disappear. It starts to vanish. And why would God want to bring something to heaven that has no ability to be proud of itself here on earth? You know, it says when we're ashamed of God before men, He'll be ashamed before us before Jesus and the holy angels. And, you know, it's very clear that the church should not fail. We should not disappear. We should not vanish. We should not disperse. When you go into verse 2, it says those who speak with vanity... And with flattering, that word speak means to declare or command. It's not just saying idle words. But when we speak, we speak with authority. We speak with the power. We speak as if we are the mouthpiece of God. And it says when we speak with vanity, emptiness, devastation, ruin, when we speak with flattering, smooth, seductive, when we look to divide, seeing what is the church doing today? The church is not working to bring itself together. It's seeking to divide. It's seeking to be, well, I'm my group and you're your group and we can't do this together because you are this and I am that. And we seek to just separate ourselves. We can be just a half mile down the road and one church won't do nothing with the other because they don't like the things that we believe. That's right. And we wonder why so many people live the way they live. We wonder why so many people run away from the church. We wonder why so many people say, well, I can't come to your church. Why can't you come to church? Well, my preacher said, well, pooey on your preacher. Your preacher ain't the one who's going to get you into heaven. Your preacher is not the one that's going to stand before an almighty God and stand right there and say, can I come in? You can, you can make yourself not be in the presence of God by keeping yourself separated from the body of Christ. Come on. See, we, we think we're just fine. We think all, all walks of life are going into heaven. We think all badness, all there's going to be badness, there's going to be Methodists, there's going to be Catholic, there's going to be Pentecostal, there's going to be Presbyterians in, in heaven. I'm here to tell you that's a lie. There ain't going to be any Baptists in heaven. There ain't going to be any Catholics in heaven. There ain't going to be any Presbyterian. There ain't going to be any Pentecostal. There ain't going to be any Church of Christ in That's heaven. Right, it's yes. going to be the body of Christ. That's it's right. going to be Christians who are in heaven. Baptists don't exist in heaven. But Pentecostal don't exist in heaven. Presbyterian don't exist in heaven. Those who have been sanctified and called by God, that's what exists in heaven. So I, I, I'm just going to say, listen, I, I'm tired of people saying, so there will be some Baptists there. No, there won't. There will be those who have been called and sanctified. And God don't care what your denomination is. He can care less what you called yourself on this earth. All He cares about is what you're called in your heart. And are you a Christian? Or are you doing anything so far in Psalms 12? Because if you're doing anything here in Psalms 12, guess what? You're not going to be standing in the presence of God. Plain there. These are the things that we ought not do so that we stand in the presence of the Lord. Because what you do on earth will determine if you dwell in heaven. We forget that. 
We forget that completely. We think that it's okay. I can do the things that I want to do. And I'm still going to dwell in heaven. That's not what God said. Verse 3. He says, uh, the proud, those who speak of proud things, those who boast, those who try to increase our own understanding, those are the ones that, that will not be standing in the heavenly places. Verse 4, it says, We need no one who is master over me. It says, With our tongue we prevail. Our lips, they are our own. Who shall lord over me? See, right there, when we start to think that our own words, the things that we speak, the things that we trust that come out of our own mouth, when we become the Lord of our own self, we speak wrongly. It is not our tongue. It is not our lips. They are God's mouth. They are God's lips. It is Him we shall prevail. We cannot prevail over ourselves. And who is He that is Lord of us? It is but God that is the Lord and Lord over all. Verse 5, it says that the poor, the poor have been made poorer. The needy cry out. When you don't reach out to the poor, when you don't reach out to the hungry, you are not doing the things of God. You're not doing what God has called you to do. Do you see how what you do on earth, how you live here on the earth, can determine if you dwell in heaven. Jesus spoke about it so many times that there's things that we have to do as Christians. He says, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. See, we fail to do those things. We think our service is coming to the church and that's good enough. Your Psalms 12, 1 through 5, you're proud. You speak vanity. You have flattering tongues. You believe that you are the master of your own life. You have left out the poor and the wicked. In verse 8 it says, wicked men walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. See, we are exalting unholy men to holy levels. And when we do that, the wicked walk everywhere. Even inside the church. Amen. And that's what's happening today. The wicked walk inside the church and what do we do about it? We continue to think that we're the Lord of our own mouths and the Lord over our own lips. If you go with me to Romans, Romans 14, Romans 14, verses 11 through 12. It says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We have to give an account for every word that is spoken, every word that is said. That word account, and the word is logos, it means word, decrees, thoughts, doctrines, teachings, meditations, reasonings, motives. We think that we give account for every word spoken, but listen, you're giving account for your thoughts. You're giving account for your motives. You're giving account for the things you meditate on. You're giving account for your doctrine. Listen, if you claim that Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, if you claim that as your doctrine, you will give an account for that. You will give an account for those things that you believe that were not based in Scripture. Come on. But what do we do? We think we're okay. We think that we can live on earth the way we want to and still reside in heaven. How you live on the earth determines if you live in heaven and how soon we forget that. Go with me to Psalms 15. I want to show you the way out. I want to show you the way out of this because we fail to see that there is a way out this morning. We just want to do everything our way. But God has laid out a plan this morning. And it's found in Psalms 15. Psalms 15. And it says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And y'all listen to me now. Who shall dwell and who shall walk in the holy hill? It says, He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that does not backbite with his tongue, 
nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he who honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Did y'all see what Psalms 15 1 said? Pardon me. It says, Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? See what we said? How you live and act on earth determines whether you live in heaven. And it says if you walk uprightly, you've got to walk straight, you've got to walk narrow. If you walk with righteousness, that means that you're good and you're godly to everybody no, no matter what. You speak the truth in your heart. You don't sit there and look at somebody and tell them that the sin they're doing is okay. You speak truth in love. This is what you've got to do. You can't backbite with your tongue. You can't say false things about your neighbor. You, you can't talk back. You cannot do evil towards your neighbor. You cannot say things against them when you know it's a lie. When you sit there and lie against your neighbor. Hey, did y'all hear about old neighbor so and so? He did this, this, and this when you know he didn't. That's not godly. You will not dwell in the holy hills. Uh, in, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. When you take a vile individual, somebody that you just know is wicked, you lift them up to a holy uh, standard. That's not a godly person. That you honor them that you honor them that fear the Lord. You swear to his own hurt and change it not. That simply means that you to a fault will put somebody above yourself. You will put them before your needs and you will make sure their needs and it says you swear it and you change it not. It means you don't flip flop. You don't tell somebody one thing and then do something else. You know, right now, I would be one of those that, that I wouldn't be dwelling in the holy hills if I walked out the door. I made a promise to God, whether it be three, three hundred, three thousand, I'm going to preach the Word of God. I'm going to preach it as hard as I can. I'm going to preach it as strong as I can. I'm going to preach it with the same truth I can. I'm not failing. I'm not going against anything. I stand where God has called me to be. And it goes on to say, He that put it out his money to use read or take a reward against the innocent. It doesn't mean you you don't take a bribe to say something wrong against somebody. Hey, and there's churches that are doing that today. There's churches, they may not call it a bribe, but the preacher will sit there and somebody will come to me and come to them and go, listen, I need you to do a funeral. And that person was as wicked as the day is long, but I want you to preach them into heaven. Okay, how much? Listen, if you were a devil on earth, you're a devil in hell. Come on. If you didn't live for God on earth, you would have died with Him in hell. I ain't going to preach you into heaven if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I can't do that. It's not my ability to preach you there. If you died in a living sin, you live in hell. That's where you go to. You don't get to go to heaven. Well, brother, you read that out of the Old Testament. That's just the Old Testament. All right, well, go to the New Testament. Go to 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter verse chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. I just read you in Psalms 15 what it said that you needed to do in the Old Testament to dwell in the tabernacle, to dwell in, in the Most High, to dwell and live with God forever. Well, that's just the Old Testament. I can't trust what it says. Okay, 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1 verses 4 through 10. Whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having the escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, so right there, divine nature, it means you're going to heaven. He says, Beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, Patience to patience, godliness, and the God to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, 
They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fail. Wow! There it is in the New Testament. Everything that David wrote in the book of Psalms chapter 15. What you've got to do to make sure that you dwell in heaven. How you act and live on the earth determines whether or not you dwell in heaven. David wrote it in the book of Psalms. Peter wrote it in his book. And it's very plain. Everything that we said in the book of Psalms is right there in verse 4 through 10. But what do we do in the church? We think that our good is good enough. Your good will never be good enough. Your great is never great enough. We as a people, as a person, cannot do anything to enter ourselves into the portals of glory, but how we act and live for Jesus will determine the path and direction that we go. And we can determine that. We can choose to live like the devil or we can to choose to live like Christ. And depending on how we live, depending on how we act, it determines where we dwell. Amen. That's the point I want you all to get across this morning. I want you to hear me. How you live and act determines your dwelling place. But we forget that so much. We don't allow the presence of God to come in and to be with us. Remember what it said in, in Psalms 12, when we fail, when we speak vanity and flattering and proud words, when we think that no one can be the master over us, when we seek to make the poor poor, and we seek to make the needy cry out, and we seek to lift up the wicked, we seek to exalt them, when we seek to do that, we are bringing hell to earth. We're not bringing heaven to earth. And right now I can tell you, hell dwells so strongly in the earth right now. Too many people would rather uh, 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 be out doing things than being in the house of God. Too many people would rather be going to, to movies than be in the house of God. Too many people would rather you know, make sure that their kids do their baseball games and football games and everything like that on Sunday instead of going to the house of God. People think, I go on Sunday morning, I've done my duty, I've done my service. Come Listen. On. If you are doing your duty and your service, if you truly love God the way you say you love God, you want to be in His presence as many times as you can. That's right. Whether it be Sunday morning, Sunday night, right. Wednesday, Wednesday night, whether it be a Tuesday, a Monday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, you've got to go into the dwelling place of the Most High every single chance you get. It's not just a two days a week. It's seven days a week. If you want to get into the portals of glory. you got to change how you live and act on this earth. If you are a part of this world, you will live and die with this world. If you are a part of heaven, you will live and you will live in heaven. See, I didn't say you will live and die in heaven because when you live here for God, you will live there in heaven. And that's the determination that we can make today. And I just ask you, where is it that you dwell do you dwell in the wicked places? Do you dwell in the, the lowly places? Or do you dwell in the place of the Most High this morning? Because I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people who claim to be Christians and you're not dwelling in the place of the Most High. You're dwelling in wicked places because you're not adhering to the Word of God. You're lifting up vile people. You're, you're, you're not... You're using flattering words. You make promises and you don't keep them. You, you, you'll, you'll take, uh, you, you'll take a, a piece of chocolate to say something bad about somebody. 
You'll even do it so much as you, you, you'll take a pat on the back and just tear down the preacher. It's what the church does today. They don't stand for the Word of God. They don't stand for the people of God. They don't stand for the works of God and His words anymore. And church, we've got to come out of that. We've got to start determining how we act and live so that we can dwell in the place of the Most High. Father God, we're so grateful once again today, God, that we're able to come before You, Lord. That we're able to walk in Your mighty presence. We're able to stand before You, dear God. And know that You walk with us, God, and that You dwell with us, God. God, we, we lift up Your standard this morning, dear God. We, we, we challenge those who claim Christianity, God, but, but, but don't walk in the right path, dear God. That who just walk in their denomination, dear God. We know no denomination will ever step foot in the portals of glory, God. Only the children of God. Only those who've been called, who've been sanctified, who've been set apart, dear God. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And there's so many people, God, that have written their own names down, not knowing, Father, that if they can't write their own name in, your son has to write their name in. And so God, today, we ask that you just dwell with us today, God. Excuse me. <clears throat> that you abide with us today, God. God, that you help to help us to lift up a new standard in your name, Father. And it's with all these things we speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you could play us a song for us, Sister Pastor Crystal. <laughs> this is faster. <laughs> You're tipping me. Are there any of you online that have any prayer requests this morning? You can uh, give them to us. We will pray over them as uh, Pastor Crystal finds us a song to to play this morning and I just challenge you folks again I challenge you to start looking at how you walk on this earth start looking at it start examining it real close and, and see where it is that you walk and if your walk doesn't line up with a holy God if your walk doesn't line up with Jesus you need to change your walk ready? yes you'll have to turn up the volume so you turn it on the computer. On the computer? Yeah. Uh, the button's on the keyboard. There's something that's a word that will bless you. He started over. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in the way it appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship Cause it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can you this word? No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. The way things appear, you're looking into my heart. Yeah. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing. It's all about you. It's all about you. 
That's my prayer and that's my belief and I believe one of these days it will happen. Amen? Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, if everybody's feeling good, uh, we want to thank Spirit Food for Thought for being with us this morning. And we just ask that you be blessed. Come back with us tonight at 5 o'clock and join in with us once again for House of Worship here live from Linville, Kentucky.